Queensland Bookbinders Guild sells a small um, do-it-yourself bookbinding kit. It's for a multi-section square back book. It ends up looking like this. We were selling these recently at the Lost Trades Fair in Toowoomba and I realised that I'd never actually um, done one of these kits so I brought one home and did it and that's the result. And I actually struggled a bit with uh, the instructions for the sewing so I thought it'd be useful to do a little video on it. As well as the kit you need a brush, some glue, um, some water for cleaning up, a rag and some waste paper and also a pair of scissors. The kit has all the materials except for the glue that you'll need. Has the instructions of course. Uh, the, the book cloth is um, some book cloth that's been made up by one of the members of the guild. Another set of instructions just in case. Has a bit of scrim for reinforcing the spine, a needle, some thread, some spacers for uh, spacing out the uh, cover boards. This is the cover boards and some pre-folded and uh, pre-punched sections and finally the spine piece. You start by sewing the sections which of course means threading the needle. The needles are a bit shorter than the needles that I normally use but I better use what's used in the kit. So you start by just um, taking the first section and sewing along in and out starting on the outside. From this point on, the sewing can be a bit easier if you prop it up on something. So I've just grabbed a book to prop the text block on. So bring over the second section and start by going in uh, the first hole and then coming out the second one. Now we need to link up with the section below. So you go down through the, um, uh, between the thread and the book on the section below, and then back up and back through the hole that you've just come out. Go along to the next hole and do the same thing, except this time you just sort of go down behind the uh, thread of the lower section. And then back in the hole that you've come out of. Then go along to the end.
to join up the first two sections at the starting end or the head uh, just do a square knot just check the thread is nice and taut on the inside Sewing the remaining sections are all the same and slightly different from the first two. So going uh, to the, through the first hole, back out the second, and then you want to put the thread in and catch it up around the thread between the two sections below. Now try and avoid knots. So you put the needle in uh, between the two sections below the one being joined, and then back out. So you sort of do a link stitch to the two sections below. Once you've caught up the two sections below, the needle goes back through the hole that you came out of. Repeat this for the next hole. Thank you. 
And to attach at the end, you do a kettle stitch. So you go in uh, with the needle between the two sections below, uh, pull the thread through till you have a little loop, and then bring the needle up through the loop. And it's called a kettle stitch. The remaining of the sewing is just uh, repeating this procedure until you run out of sections. I use the instructions to keep track of the um, two sections below so I can find them easily.
To finish the sewing, just do a double kettle stitch and cut the thread off with about a 10 millimeter tail. Knock the book up firmly to the spine to get all the sections aligned. The final step in preparing the block is to reinforce the spine with the scrim, which is the loose weave material. So get some glue, it's just some craft PVA in this case. Uh, my uh, brush is maybe a bit larger than I needed. Put some adhesive on the side of the book at the spine and then on the spine and then place the scrim uh, on this adhesive and press it down, turn it over and then put some more adhesive on the other side and wrap the scrim around the text block. Put a bit more adhesive over the spine of the book and then hang it over the edge of your bench or your table to let the adhesive dry. While the adhesive on the text block is drying, we can make the case or the cover. So draw a line 15 millimeters in from the top and one side, and we'll pitch the boards to those lines. The instructions say to put the adhesive on the book cloth, but uh, I think it's a little less messy to put it on the boards and then put the boards on the, on the cloth, so we'll do it my way. Just do one board, uh, put that in place. Next is the spine strip and to put that in place you use one of the spacers and then use the second spacer to put the second board. Make sure they're all aligned on that top line.
trim the corners off five millimeters away from the corner of the board. Just mark it with a ruler. And cut that off on the four corners. Bookbinders always turn in the head and tail first. There's a little tab of cloth that you'll see in a moment that needs to be pushed down. And that produces a very small lump on the edge of the board. And you want that lump to be on the fore edge and not on the head and the tail where it would slide along the bench and potentially wear faster. So just push that little tab down to produce a really neat corner. Now do the opposite end of the book exactly the same way. And finally we turn in the four edges. Your thumbnail is a good substitute for a bone folder for getting a nice crisp uh, fold over the board. So we'll just leave the cover and the text block dry. Overnight's probably best, but at least an hour or so, just so it's not tacky. I'll just show you one feature of this book. It is a hollow back book. So when you open the book up, the spine is not adhered to the cover. So that when you open it up, it can, what's called throw up, which isn't the best uh, description, but that's what bookbinders say. So you don't want to put adhesive on the spine of the book when you case it in. The final step of attaching the cover or the case to the text block is called casing in. So just get the um, text block in position. So make sure it's uh, spaced uh, vertically so that uh, the overhang of the boards is equal at the top and the bottom and then just put a layer of adhesive on the uh, outside sheet of paper which is going to, it's called the paste down um, get rid of all the bristles that come out of your new brush and then close the book
turn the book over and do the other side exactly the same way. Just put a waste sheet underneath that first sheet so that you don't get any glue onto the other pages which will cause them to stick together. Feel the need to open up the book while it's wet and fragile. Do it on the edge of the bench and open up the, the text block. Uh, don't go more than halfway open, otherwise you will tear the paper while it's wet. Now just put it under uh, some weight uh, to let it dry. Um, put a couple of pieces of waterproof paper uh, between the text block and the covers so that the moisture doesn't get into the uh, paper. For drying, put the book on a cutting board and hang the spine over the edge so that the uh, weight that you put on it doesn't uh, distort or crush the spine. The next day, uh, hopefully, the book will be dry and uh, finished and ready for use.